Over the past number of weeks, Canadian security agencies have been actively pursuing credible allegations of a potential link between agents of the government of India and the killing of a Canadian citizen, Hardeep Singh Nijar. So that, of course, happened in Surrey, and that announcement in Parliament, with really no hint before it was uh, being announced, it was a bit of a shockwave heard around the world. Although it kind of explained why, when the Prime Minister met with uh, the Prime Minister Modi recently, it was a little chilly and things weren't going well, and that's why trade talks kind of stalled. So it kind of makes sense, but think about it. We are talking about accusing a major... Mm, Trade partner? Yeah, ally of assassinating one of our citizens on Canadian soil. Right. So this happened in June, I believe. He was shot while he was in his own vehicle. He said, or his family said, that CSIS had been talking to him weekly, saying, you are targeted, your life is at risk, and sure enough, boom. And then we saw one of those situations where the bad guys ran away, vehicle Vehicle on fire. And they have so far not caught anyone but India is all offended now yep yep Canadian allies aren't keen to take sides in this confrontation with India over uh, the sick activists death Reggie Giacchini is a Washington correspondent who joins us regularly to parse out what's happening on the world stage specific to what how it affects Canada and US relations as well and how this is playing out Reggie let's get you in here to talk a little bit about how this is playing in Washington is it at all Yeah, actually, it is. uh, And it's been brought up at a couple of different briefings, both from the State Department and from the White House. Uh, And I think that this is important because it puts the United States in a bit of a difficult position here. Look, I spoke to a senior administration official earlier in the week. They expressed the concern that's now being spoken uh, publicly, including from the National Security Advisor uh, on Thursday. We also heard from the State Department, uh, who said that they're urging the Indian government to cooperate with the Canadian investigation. But on the U.S. front, Uh, This is difficult. Canada is obviously a longstanding partner, trade partner, friend of the United States. India uh, is a kind of new relationship that the White House has really been trying to cultivate here. And they're looking at India as a way to try and be a counterbalance to countries like China and Russia. So the U.S. is now trying to delicately walk uh, being stuck in the middle here by saying, look, India, we need you to cooperate with this investigation, while at the same time making themselves sympathetic to what has become um, a pretty critical situation uh, for their incredibly close partners in Ottawa. Yeah, and there's a lot of fallout. We have diplomats being expelled on both sides. Now India suspending visa applications for Canadians, India issuing travel warnings uh, for Indians coming to Canada. So it's it's nasty. But on another international front, we have the um, prime minister of um, Ukraine. Oh, yeah. Vladimir Zelensky, the president President of Ukraine. Ukraine. Yeah, I thought that didn't sound right. Coming to the United Nations, we have a little bit of video. Uh, So he did make a speech where he was essentially calling the allies out for not doing enough, which he was criticized for. Also, the um, GOP Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy, didn't let him come to speak uh, as well. There's a lot of complications here around Zelensky in the U.S., Reggie. And and the problem, too, is the fact that there's a lot of money on the line and the GOP doesn't really want to spend more for Ukraine. And this is all tied up in uh, inability to pass a a vote in uh, Congress to deal with spending, U.S. spending. Yeah, I mean, look, this visit by Volodymyr Zelensky to the United States uh, was big because it put him on the world stage at the United States, at least as a wartime president. And his time here in Washington, D.C. was far different than what he experienced just nine months ago. A far more icy reception from Republicans who are now uh, critical of the money that the United States is trying to continue to spend uh, for Ukraine to defend itself. Uh, Republicans are are looking for accountability. They see this counteroffensive as not living up to expectations that had really been put in place by kind of armchair generals and and by TV analysts. But at the end of the day, the fact that Zelensky was able to come to Congress, he met behind closed doors with with, with key lawmakers and then sat side by side with U.S. President Joe Biden, uh, it is a strong signal to the American public that, look, this is a worthwhile investment. The president looking for $24 billion on top of the $113 billion that have already been spent. Zelensky said it's it's crucial, uh, it's critical, They need it, especially heading into the winter months here. Secondary problem is domestic politics in the United States. You're right on the spending front. 
the House is trying to pass a spending bill uh, to, to keep the government funded, Ukraine funding is attached to that. If some Republicans don't go for it, there's a real risk that the U.S. government shuts down on September 30th. And if that happens, it's more problems for Ukraine because deliveries of weapons would halt and so too would critical training. So there's a lot tied to this request for funding right. when it comes to helping Ukraine out. It's unbelievable we're going down the debt ceiling road again so soon. Like it just, it feels... It... You know what's really unbelievable is the fact that the Republicans are pushing ahead with these impeachment proceedings against President Biden when they have not a shred of evidence. Theater. Their fight is against Hunter Biden. They might have some evidence there or some suggestion of bad behavior, but not with the president. This is crazy to me. Where do you see this going? Yeah, I mean, especially when they're facing a government shutdown and the focus still remains on on an unelected member of the Biden family and that they're trying to investigate and tie to the sitting president, remembering, too, that the accusations that they're making against Hunter Biden and Joe Biden go back more than 3000 days to when Joe Biden was the vice president. And you're right, there hasn't been any um, evidence that's been put forward. It's kind of been a smoke and mirrors show and, and Republicans are being accused uh, of, of simply kind of hijacking the government to go after essentially what former President Donald Trump wants to see investigated here. Uh, but at the end of the day, pushing forward an impeachment process without bringing a vote to the House floor is exactly what Republicans criticized Democrats for doing right. uh, during the first and second impeachments of uh, of Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. But this is what they this is what they want to do. The problem is if they don't, if they don't, if they if they're not able to kind of find anything and carry it through, this could become problematic for Republicans come election time because they may have other Republicans who say, "Look, you wasted our time," and they really do risk their majority if they don't come up with anything. We barely scratched the surface with you, Reggie. Yeah. We've only got just a couple seconds to go here, but we have to talk about D Donald Trump's attack on Jack Smith and the whole how he's back on social media and moving moving the shell game around. It, it continues there. We haven't even touched on that. Yeah, and look, just really quickly here, Donald Trump has essentially been put under a bit of a gag order by the special counsel. Special counsel Jack Smith says that Donald Trump's words could potentially have an impact on the juries that have to do with the investigations that he's carrying out. Donald Trump is also trying to get the judge uh, in his District of Columbia case removed, saying that things that she has said about January 6th defendants in the past, uh, you know, disqualify her from being on the bench. The U.S. government pushes back and says, look, there's no there there. This judge is qualified. These investigations are legitimate, but this is all simply a distract and delay tactic for the former president because the more motions come forward, the more time it takes for this court case to actually move forward in a more significant style. Oh, it's so aggravating <laughs> to me. Reggie Cicchini, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Reggie. Hey, we're filling the Czech Vancouver studios with dogs. We're going to lighten things up. Significant. I'm going to try and get <laughs> Linda a dog. I'm telling you. Yeah, and still ahead, he's been dubbed the Internet's favorite dad. His videos watched hundreds of millions of times over. Canada's own social media darling, Brittle Star, joins us next. All right, and we have to talk about your viewing party photos. Oh, my goodness, are you filling up our inboxes? And we love it. Here's how it works. You take a picture of you watching the show right now, and you send it in. You can send it via Twitter, Instagram, or to our email addresses, which are up on your screen right now. Let's start with Aaron and Steve. Oh, yeah, there's a little joke, a little uh, Photoshopped photo. We also I have Gary it. and Bentley. Love it. Hi, From Gary White and Rock. Bentley. Hi there. Lori and Jemmy the cat in Langley. Oh, Hello, guys. Cat. And Phyllis and the foster pup. Thank you all for watching. We we'll really appreciate it. We'll be back in a moment. Time for you to get shopping.